Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Beeline Velo2 Bicycle GPS Computer. These days, it seems like most new cycling GPS computers are getting more expensive and complicated with advanced data metrics and capabilities. The new Beeline Velo2 bucks that trend and offers a minimalist, intuitive cycling computer with routing software that uses user feedback to optimize the routing. With the Velo2, Beeline has retained a lot of the features that made the original Velo such a hit on Kickstarter back in 2015, but upgraded the interface and added optional detailed navigation prompts. In terms of packaging, you can see a nice and simple cardboard box. You have the yellow and black branding on here that really pops on camera and specs printed on the back. We'll go ahead and take it out of the box and go over those. Retail price of this is 97 USD. It's a minimalist GPS cycling computer and it offers their hit compass mode, which simply shows an arrow as well as a more detailed navigation view. And that's what's really new for the Velo 2. It has USB type C charging and 11 hour runtime with a rocker top interface, which makes it really simple to use instead of a touchscreen. In terms of what comes with it, you get the instruction manual, a USB type C charging cable, their universal mount, which is really simple to put on your handlebars, and then the device itself. Now let's take a look at the weight of the Velo 2, the computer by itself. That comes in at 24 grams. And if you include the handlebar mount with the two longer straps, that's only four. Visually, the Velo 2 looks more like a smartwatch than a GPS computer and wouldn't look out of place on your wrist. You can see it has a round profile that's quite distinct, thicker than a normal smartwatch, but has a basic plastic bezel and a yellow base this mount, although it looks like a Garmin mount, is essentially a double Garmin mount. So you have the tabs on the sides and top and bottom. So you do have to use their proprietary mount. Which is a little disappointing. It would have been great if they just stuck with a standard Garmin mount, but operates the same way, rotate it. And instead of a quarter turn, it's actually a fourth of a turn. So you just do a slight rotation and locks into place. Instead of the touchscreen that you found on the original Velo, they've actually switched to what they call a rocker top design. So there are four buttons here, and it's like a D-pad on a gaming console. So these actually tilt downward, and that's what engages the buttons. So you can see, you can go through the different options, and a built-in gyroscope here for the navigation, which also doubles as a little animation of the bike, which is really cool. So you can get tilt around, and then buttons on the side and top. So really easy to use, and you have nice feedback, unlike a touchscreen, which without haptic feedback is not really obvious when you pressed it. And you have four buttons. You have the green and red, which are labeled on the edges this is to make the route positive or negative. And also duplicates the going forward and backward in menu. Up and down, which gives you the different data screens, as well as battery statuses. And then the power button is the bottom one. So if you hold it, you'll actually see the ring kind of fill up and then turn off, turn it on. You simply hold it. Now let's take a look at the Beeline app. Now, as with the Velo 2, which is designed to be really simple, the app is also very simple to use. So you basically have a couple tabs here. You have a ride tab where you can create a ride or just do a free ride by pressing record. You can't actually do a free ride directly from the device. You have to come here and press record, which is a little bit strange. Would have been nice if you just had a record button on the actual Velo 2. But you can do that free ride there or plan a ride. You can see your previous rides. So you have some metrics. You even have a free heat map, which is really cool. You have some basic settings here. There's really not that many options on the device, but you have auto brightness, alerts and sounds, and you can even change the auto pause feature uh, by enabling or disabling it. And the time format as well. So a couple of basic things here that you can do. You can also sync to Strava, which is really nice. So you can upload your rides directly there for more metrics. Now with setting up a ride, it's pretty simple. You click the plan ride button. So with plan a ride, you start with the starting destination and then you set a end location. So a nice interface here. And then there's basically a couple of options here. So I'll give you multiple routes. Some of them are loud, quiet. They have different ratings depending on how you do it. So you can see a couple of options and depending on your location, if you're more urban setting, this will be a lot more useful. 
while on our more kind of co-side setting, there's really not that many right options. So kind of routes you through a basic area. Now you can see there's a couple options here. We can do a fixed route, which will actually route through a certain route, or we can do compass, which is like the, uh, what the beeline was really meant for. So you make a beeline there, it's just as the crows fly, straight direction, and you would get a basic compass telling you how close you are to that final destination. So you can pick the one you want. You can't change it mid-ride. So you have to choose that up front. Once you've chosen, you just press go. And then you can navigate to the start if you're not at the current location. And then that's pretty much it. You can press go and it starts recording. So a really cool feature. And it actually mimics the compass on both the app and the device. So you can see the compass is on here. And you can actually see the different waypoints. So a really cool feature, you can add multiple waypoints even with a compass, and it'll just direct you there or give you a more direct route if you select the more traditional navigation approach. Now let's take a look at the Velo 2 on the road. Here we have it in the compass mode, which is really cool. Instead of having a complicated grid display with multiple metrics, you have a simple arrow and the remaining distance. And it's a really fun mode to use if you're trying to find a new route or explore a new way to get to work or home. So a really feature that I like, and that's what really set the Velo apart, especially in its first iteration. And here you have the rocker top design instead of the touchscreen, so really easy to use when you're riding. You can rate the roads by pressing the green or the red button, and you have nice feedback. So instead of a touchscreen, we don't really have haptic feedback. The rocker top, you can feel it. So a big upgrade from the previous version. We also really appreciate the simplified design. You have a little bar on the bottom that fills, and basic data displays. The other option is a more traditional navigation view. So here you get the turn, a little schematic of the upcoming route, as well as the distance remaining. So pretty simple to use. And with the little schematics, you have better idea of where you're turning instead of just saying to go left and right, especially in more complicated intersections. And you can see the very simple black and white display works out really well, even though it is a color display. Some of the overlays are green, red. With this color scheme, simple to read, and even in sunlight or dim settings, very easy to use. As you approach your final destination, it even shows up on the map with the remaining distance and the bottom bar fills up. So a nice mode and gives you a little more information. So if you're doing a more complicated route, this is the navigation mode to choose, especially if you have a lot of waypoints. Once you've reached your final destination, you'll get a nice summary of the ride and the ability to end it. So a really nice design. You can't connect sensors, of course, but if you don't care about that and you just want basic metrics, then this is the way to go. So here you can see you can end the ride and it is a color screen. So it gives you average speed, distance, time, and then takes you back to the home page. Now let's do a little comparison between the Velo 2 and other computers on the market. The big difference between the Velo 2 is that it's much more of a user-friendly urban computer than your traditional cycling computer. Here we have the Psych Plus and you can see similar round profile, has a Garmin mount instead of their modified Beeline mount. But you can see a lot more data metrics here. So you actually have speed, average speed, timers. You can connect sensors, cadence sensor, speed sensor, heart rate monitor. Whereas the Velo 2 is much more of a basic speed display. So this is much more oriented toward a urban commuter or someone just wants basic metrics rather than something like the Psych Plus. There are also other computers like the Kuspu that we have here. So very simple, but again, it's so a much more data forward design instead of the more navigational design on the Bella 2. So a bit of a different market. So if you are looking for more metrics, I recommend a different computer than the Velo 2. But if you're just looking for basic directions and you're in the city, then the Velo 2 is a great option. It's more fun and easy to ride with. In terms of navigation as well, once you get in the higher end computers like the Brighton S800 we have here, you have full maps. You can do routes, you can upload routes, you can actually navigate home a lot more than the basic arrow and route display on the Velo 2, but obviously it costs you money, so it's about $400, and really replaces your GPS phone. Even though you still need the phone for rerouting, you get a lot more info directly on the device, while the Velo 2 really relies on your phone for all the directions. Now let's go over the pros and cons for the Velo 2. What we like about it is you have a minimalist round design, and a very intuitive navigation options and display. So it's really easy to use instead of getting more complicated. Also allows you to rate the roads and improve routes. So it's a nice option to really see incremental improvements. Some of the cons for the device is the fact that it does have a proprietary mount. 
very similar to Garmin, but they have four tabs. And it does require a cell phone app to initiate the ride, so it's highly dependent on your cell phone. And you can't even just start a free ride recording, which would have been a nice feature or load the routes directly from the device. Taking everything into account would give the Velo 2 a 9.3 out of 10. It's a refreshingly simple GPS computer. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com, as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.